I'm Jenna Miscavige. I was born and raised in Scientology. I left when I was 21 years old and wrote a book about it. My uncle, David Miscavige, is the leader of Scientology. And this is my YouTube channel. So as a little intro to this video, I wanted to say that one of the things that make this recipe special to me is that uh, when I worked in Scientology, um, when I was in the C organization, um, I was born and raised in this organization. And basically you sign a billion year contract, you um, work 100 hour weeks, you work seven days a week, I, you work inside a building most of the time. Um, and so you never, like you don't get summers off because we, we also weren't going to school. We would go to school once a week and it was at a Scientology school. So at no point in my life uh, prior to leaving Scientology did I get to really celebrate the seasons that I was in and um, and just like enjoy that part of being alive and being on the planet. And so I feel like it's really special when I make like seasonal recipes because it's like sort of getting to enjoy the things that I didn't um, growing up and just sort of like making up for lost time. And just when I, um, when I include things like fresh tomatoes, fresh basil, it just makes me feel like the world is beautiful and magical. And um, it's a miracle that these things grow in the first place. And it's like makes them even more ephemeral that they're only here in certain seasons. And so I find that celebrating the seasons of the year um, is just like especially healing for me. Hey guys, so today I wanted to show you my favorite tomato soup recipe. It's so summery and I want to make sure that I do this recipe at least once this summer and it's just so easy and fun and you can use fresh tomatoes and um, yeah, it just has so few steps that it's just so easy to whip up. All right, so here we go. Um, so I have this pan here, which we're gonna put everything in. I've already preheated the oven to 480 degrees. And so it starts off with like two pints of cherry tomatoes. And I think it just uses cherry tomatoes because they just have more skin on them per tomato. Um, so it just gives it a little more flavor. And I like to use like some heirloom cherry tomatoes. I like sun gold because they're like a little bit um, tangy and I just, I don't know, whatever I, whatever I can find that gives it some extra flavor. Um, when I first, and even some tomatoes that are like a little bit shriveled, this is like a perfect way to use them up, like that I might not want to use in my salad just because they're just like getting a little, I don't know, here's one that's kind of shriveled. I just think that this is a perfect place to use them. And the fact that they're shriveled just gives them, it actually intensifies their flavor because it's like sort of dehydrating them. A few years ago, one of my neighbors had all, had his whole front yard full of tomato vines. And he said that I could come over and take as much as I wanted. And so I took like buckets and buckets and I made this tomato soup like every day for like a month. <laughs> All right. So I just, different colors. I don't know. Just gives a nice variety of flavor and nutrients and they just look like a pretty rainbow. Okay. So, and then now, okay, here's all our tomatoes. Okay, now it says one whoops, yellow onion roughly chopped. This is from reading my own writing. So there's no need to like dice this up perfectly because it's gonna be blended after we roast it. So just chop it into pieces that are just roughly the size of the tomatoes so things cook somewhat evenly. I am a big old baby when it comes to cutting onions, so I 
my goal is to do it as quickly as possible to get them out of my face. Oh, even now it's starting. Do you guys have any good tips and tricks for this? I've seen ones that are like wear sunglasses and I'm like, well, if I want to chop my arm off, I'll do that. Or like chew gum and breathe through your mouth, but that has never worked for me. All right. I'm just really roughly popping it because it's starting. Ooh. Are you guys this sensitive with onions or is am I like super special in this regard? Okay. I'm gonna put this right here. I'm actually gonna get rid of this cutting board because I can't work with it anymore because of the onions and I'm gonna rinse off the knife. And I'm gonna rinse out my eyeballs. Okay. Might have messed up my makeup a little bit. Okay, we're safe. All right. Now we're going to add a bunch of basil. Have this little plant, which I very much have neglected to water. But it still looks pretty good. I'm gonna take all the big leaves. I used to grow some basil in my garden that I would use for um, foliage and arrangements. And if you have a basil plant, one of the best ways to keep it going for as long as possible is to um, cut off the flowers when it starts to, when they start to bloom. Because once the flowers come, the plant will go to seed and it signifies to the plant that it's like, it's now, because the seeds are basically the plant's children. And so it's now done with its life cycle and it can um, die. And if you just cut off the flowers, then the plant will keep going a lot longer. All right, I'm taking this as a good bunch of basil. Over here. Okay. I'm just going to chop it up a little bit. Okay, now it says a bunch of thyme. So I'm just gonna put this little bunch in there. I love the smell of thyme so much. When I was a kid and I was at the ranch, which is a boarding school for um, Scientology's children of senior executives, um, it wasn't a good place to grow up, but um, some we, we did about 35 hours of labor per week. And one of the things we did, which was a fun job, was we would literally take little things of time and we would take the leaves off of them and make big buckets of them so that they could use them in the galley to basically feed the Scientology workers. And the smell is just so nostalgic for me. All right, so I'm gonna put this big bunch in there and I'm just gonna take the whole bunch out after. So I'm just gonna put it together. And I put a little bit of red pepper flakes, not too much. Okay, and let's see, I'm gonna get olive oil. Just drizzle, ooh, this plant, there we go. So I just drizzle it with olive oil. I don't know, I say I use about a quarter cup just coat everything and then pepper never have too much pepper oops I forgot one thing a head of garlic oh. so you actually just cut it in half this way like this way 
there you can see and it's so cool because you don't have to peel and chop because when it comes out of the oven you're just going to be able to it's like going to be so soft that you're just going to be able to squeeze it out of there mm, it smells so good okay so i'm going to put this in there It's kind of falling apart, but, and I'm just going to make sure that those get a little bit of olive oil. All right. And here's the salt. The salt just makes everything taste so much better. It brings out the flavors and everything else. So I try not to under salt things. Okay, lots and lots of pepper. And this just goes straight into the oven. 25, 35 minutes, I start with 25. And just if everything looks roasted and nice and brown and soft, that's when I take it out. Um, so, I, so I'll just start at 25 for now. Set timer for 25 minutes. Hi guys, so it has been 35 minutes. Um, I checked it at 25 minutes, but it still wasn't done yet, but my oven runs kind of cool. Um, so maybe yours, your guys's will be fine at 25, but um, yeah, just keep an eye on it. And like, you can even like mix stuff up in between. Um, I am slightly regretting turning on my oven in this hot, hot, on this hot, hot summer day, but it's fine. It'll be worth it. All right. Here we go. Mm, look at this. So yummy and sizzling and pretty and charred. So since this is like hot AF still, um, we need to let it sit probably for about 10, 15 minutes because we're gonna be putting it in the blender and I don't wanna melt the blender. Um, so yeah, let's just give it 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so we are all cooled down. And now I'm gonna put this, all of this in the blender. This is a Vitamix, I've had it Honestly, since before my son was born. So I've had it for like 16 years and it still works awesome and I love it. And it's great for making soups and smoothies and I use it like every day or my kids use it all the time. Um, so I'm gonna take out the thyme because we don't need those like sort of sticks in there. Um, it's a little bit stuck to the bottom, but um. I'm just gonna shake it so some of the leaves might come off, but it's still gonna be blended, so I wouldn't worry about getting like every little bit of it out, but it smells delicious. I always have a little trash can. It's like it's just a little bowl. But I always like to have one in the kitchen right there. Um, it just helps me feel more organized and like I'm not making a huge mess everywhere because when I see a huge mess, it gives me anxiety. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is pick up the garlic and see how that looks. Well, you can actually squeeze out the garlic from here. Oh my God, can you see it? I'll have to zoom in. But it's just like this oozy yumminess, soft garlic. It's gonna make this taste so good and you make you have to wash your hands with soap after with some kind of fragrance because they will eternally smell like garlic, but it's worth it. Get all that yummy goodness out. See, this is it when it's squeezed out. And the other half.
Oh my goodness, this smells so good. Just if there's any, just look how smooth and like squishy and buttery it is. It's almost just like spreadable. Okay. All right, I think I got all the garlic. Guys, this smells so good. I'm just gonna scoop it all and put it in the blender. And there's just like this char in here, which you can see in the pan and on the edges of the tomatoes. And just will give so much extra flavor. Look how yummy that tomato looks. Mm. And don't forget to turn off your oven. So that your house isn't hot like mine. I actually don't have air conditioner. A lot of people in San Diego don't have air conditioner because it's pretty mild. I have like a whole house fan. Um, like I, I feel like it doesn't get too hot for too long. So I have a whole house fan, which basically like sucks in air from the outside at night. And then as long as I close the, as long as I close the windows during the day, it usually stays pretty cool. Unless of course I turn on the oven but this tomato soup is worth suffering for. Just so you can see some of the bits that are gonna give such good flavor. I might even, I think I'm gonna pour some of the stock in here just to get a little bit more of this. All right, so now we're gonna use um, a half a cup of vegetable broth. I'm just gonna get the measuring cup. I'm using two quarter cups because I can never find the cup measure when I need it. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't have to be like the exact right amount. Like you can always adjust it when it's in the pan later, but I'll put the recipe for this in the description and then maybe later in the community tab. Okay, I'm just gonna put this in here and just Scrape a little bit to get just a little extra flavor. So it looks so yummy and smells so yummy. Hopefully, I don't butcher pouring this into the blender. Okay, yay. Perfect. And then we're going to add half cup of coconut milk. My son absolutely loves this tomato soup and usually I make it with focaccia. So I'll have to do a video on making that later. But it's good with some sourdough or it's so good with grilled cheese. Okay. All right, so that was a half cup. I'm just gonna put a little more because yummy. All right, I'm gonna blend this now. Guys, I tried to video the blender with my phone inside the blender and this is what happened. <laughs> Okay, guys, it kind of looks like splatter, but maybe you can see 
how yummy it looks. I'm going to taste it. Mmm, tastes so good. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I'm going to put this on the stove just to warm it up, and then um, we will plate it up. So we are ready to serve it up. Mm. And I have a few edible flowers that I got from the garden. These are marigold. And so I'll just put some on top. It looks so pretty. Just the petals though, not the big stem part underneath. I'm sure it's fine to eat, but I think that it would be a bit too like, I don't know, too tough. This is calendula too from the garden. I just like to use the petals. Looks so pretty. Ooh, and here's another marigold. The colors are so nice and summery. You could put a little bit of basil too. Here's the basil. Oh, here it is. Maybe a little basil leaf trio. It's so pretty. Okay, let's taste it. Oh my goodness. It's so yummy. It's honestly the yummiest tomato soup I've ever tasted. Um, this is blended pretty smooth, but you can leave a little chunks in it if you like, just for some added texture. And you can add like a little bit of sour cream on top or creme fraiche or something like that. But honestly, it's just delicious how it is. Um, I'll probably make some focaccia or make a grilled cheese to go with it for dinner for my kids. This will be my lunch and dinner. So yummy. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you make this recipe yourself and you enjoy it. And don't forget to check out Sins of Scientology. And if you haven't read my book already, you can find it on Amazon. It's called Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Herring Escape. All right, see you soon. Bye.